church, Jesus is Lord. That single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At our church, your past will never define your future. There's always redemption, which means there's always a brighter day. At our church, we don't think we're better than any other church out there. We're just doing our best to become our best. At our church, we want you to believe in God, but we also want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against people who don't attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that's pursuing us. At our church, we're learning to serve God with all our hearts and we're learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you're looking for the perfect church, we're not it. At our church, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At our church, we're part of a global community that's knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at our church, we believe that really happened too. At our church, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and the feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. 
at our church, it's not really our church at all. It's His. And we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and His fame, not ours. So here's the invitation. You're invited to jump in with your whole heart at your own pace and to experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to our church. Well, welcome back, Life Changing Church, yeah. to another week of our online services. Yeah. So glad that you are joining us again this week. Uh, it's different, but it's still fun to be able to do this. And, and so I have my buddy Nate here with me. And yes. Nate, I was Hi. thinking, Hello. as uh, we're about to give some announcements here, Yeah, it has been five years, five years since you and I have done an announcement video together. Because if you remember, we obviously used to do these for Boo for the youth group. Five years ago. Five years, because that's when the Angola no. campus opened up, and yeah. that's when I left you behind to do the youth ministry. Holy smokes. <laughs> we were just babes. We were. Time, we were. We, we still yeah. are. We still are. But yeah. Uh, yeah. now, I, I know you remember well mm -hmm. our, our videos we used to do uh, Those for, were good for times. the teens. Those were good times. Funny videos. Yeah. Um, so, in fact, if you don't know what we're talking about, we have a video from back in the day uh, to show you right now. Take a look. Hey, Move, what's up? I'm Brian. And I'm Nate. And I'm Mac. And we're, we're here, here to keep, keep you on the move. Well, Nate, we're idiots. And uh, we're back. And we're back. Oh, you guys have been waiting for this for a very long time. See, what's going to happen is, is we're going to give the announcements. And while we're doing that, Mac back there is going to smoke some serves at us and try to hit us. So, here we go. I may just wet my pants. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my word. Yeah. Okay, so the first announcement is that... Oh! Mm. <laughs> the first announcement is the next two weeks... Ah! The next two weeks, we are going to be off. There's going to be no move the next two oh, weeks. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my word. There's no move the next two weeks, okay? And so those dates are something. Oh! Mm, those dates are something and something. Next two weeks, we're off. So, oh! <laughs> Both ways. So, no two weeks. Next two weeks, we're off. Oh! Ah! Safeties. Oh, my word. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, hurry up. Okay. Dude. All right. Uh, September 2nd, we're oh. doing the move kickoff party. It's gonna be awesome. We, oh my word! We're gonna have uh, blow. We're gonna have some blow. We're gonna have the uh, human foosball. You guys remember that last year was awesome. Uh, we're gonna have some great food. Ay, oh my word! Mm. And we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna do some awesome things. That's Wednesday, September. Oh. <laughs> you need to invite whoever you possibly can because it's gonna oh. be awesome. You don't want to miss this. September 2nd is the move kickoff. Oh! 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 Okay, hurry up. Wrap it up. Oh! <laughs> All right. That's pretty much it. We're going to... Woo! So, next two, the next two weeks, we're off. We're back on August 19th. And then the move kickoff is September 2nd. So, that's it. I'm Nate. I'm Brian. Oh! And that's Mac back there. Oh. Now you're still on the move. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> so obviously we've matured quite a bit. Absolutely. We have matured a lot. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So that video, the video we're making now, uh, yeah. the announcements we're about to share are not going to look like that. No, no. We're going to be a little bit straightforward <laughs> here. So before we get too far into today's service, we just want you to take a second and uh, hit the share button. Invite someone to join in on this experience. And maybe this is your first time joining us at Life Changing Church Online. We would just love for you just to take a moment and we would love for you to fill out the connect card that's in the 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 chat below if you could fill that out and just walk and fill that out real quick we would love for an opportunity to connect with you yes yeah so we have a, a couple announcements we want to share with you uh this past week pastor byron announced 
uh, that the church will continue to provide online only services at least during the month of May. But just because we're not inside these walls here as a big group doesn't mean that we have to stop growing through our faith, through the online discussion groups. So at Life Changing Church, we really truly believe that life change begins to happen when you realize that you have been rescued to be a rescuer. And, and we're in the time that we're in right now, we realize that we need each other more than ever. And so we're looking for outside the box ways that we can continue to gather together. So what we are looking for are for some individuals who are willing to lead others in an online discussion group virtually, to be able to do it virtually. And so if you are someone who would like to do that, we would, would like to lead an online discussion group for the upcoming six week series that is beginning on June 14th. We would love for you to click the link that's in the chat, uh, in the chat called Group Leader Interest Form and fill that out and we'll be getting a hold of you. So speaking of rescued lives, we want you to check out this My Rescue Story. Take a look. Hi, Life Changing Church. My rescue story is about conviction. I was convicted to stop drinking um, after our sixth miscarriage on Christmas morning, 2012. Two months after I stopped drinking, we became pregnant and baby number three was born November of 2013 and in September of 2016, baby number four. Through the two years that we battled miscarriages, um, there was a lot of negative self-talk, doubt, confusion. We didn't understand why it kept happening. And um, also feelings of greediness and guilt crept in. Um, we had two children. Those two children were born out of wedlock. So I told myself that it was my fault and um, this was my punishment for that. Through the conviction of no drinking and um, the, just the growth of those two years that has shown me that um, there are power in words. Um, words to ourself are powerful. I think we often forget that. Um, and that through um, through that we, through any situation, any storm that we go through, um, anything's possible with God. And just to speak truth to those situations um, is, is very powerful. And I sit here today, a mother of four, beautiful boys, and I have not had a drop of alcohol since January of 2013, and it's all glory to God. That is my rescue story. What an awesome rescue story. We want you to keep sharing your rescue stories with us. Make sure you're, you're, you're tagging us in that. And we just want to continue to hear about all of that. You can find out more of the details, that you, what it looks like to do that in the chat below. Yes. So we got one more thing. Yeah. One more thing. And uh, before we get to worship is if you would like to partner with us by giving, there's a couple things that you can do. You can click on the link in the chat, and this will take you directly to our giving page. Uh, so feel free to do that. Or if you want to wait till the end of the service, you can always visit us online at mylifechangingchurch.org slash give. And again, if you're not comfortable with giving online, you can always send it in uh, directly to the church. So I think I think we did it. Yeah. Yeah? Woo. All right, man. So uh, let's pray. Let's pray. All right, let's do it. God, thank you so much. Uh, for the opportunity to be able to do this, Lord, to preach the gospel in ways that uh, we are, maybe aren't used to, uh, but Lord, it's it's still good uh, to be able to preach your word and be able to uh, reach people in this way. And uh, so, Lord, also, we just pray for the giving and just pray that it continues to do amazing things. And uh, Lord, we just trust you in all things. Lord, thank you that we get to do this today, that we get to worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, Life Changing Church. Thank you so much for joining us for our online worship experience. We pray that the Holy Spirit would just begin to just encounter your heart, that you he would enter in your homes. Holy Spirit, come. Father, move in a mighty way. We love you. In Jesus' name. glory for all you brought me through and now I'm ready for whatever you want to do I'm moving forward to follow after you and 
now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Your presence is in open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is in open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. In every season, your grace has been enough. And I'm believing the mess is yet to come. And the cross before me. Hope on things above, and in you, Jesus, the mess is yet to come. Sing His presence, Your presence is in open door. We want you, Lord, like never. Your presence is in open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises, he hears faith. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, 
where we hear worship he is for. Sing his praise aloud, sing his praise aloud. Oh, awake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud, sing his praise aloud. sound that changes things, a sound of his people on their knees. Wake up, you slumbering, it's time to worship him. Wake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud, sing his praise aloud. Oh, Forever on your throne. 
so I should not have fear what you've defeated. I will trust in you, Lord. Stay so crazy, boy, you can't break me. No, miles and you can't move. Things are possible. There's no broken body. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your goodness that you show to us. Father, your, your mercy that you give to us. And Lord, we honor you as God, the creator of all things. And Lord, we uh, continue to pray for our nation, asking your hand upon our nation, asking that, that eyes would be turned to you, that feet would be turned to you, that trust would be given to you, that Lord, that our leadership would seek you. Lord, we continue to pray Deuteronomy 7, 14 that says that if my people would humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal their nation. And so, Lord, we're praying for healing for our nation, that, Lord, that you would do a work, 
that we would turn back to you once again. In God, we trust. Lord, we pray for other churches. Lord, we'd ask that you would continue to give them uh, wisdom and creative ideas. Uh, Lord, we, we pray provision for those churches. We would ask that as uh, we would continue to reach out to people and encourage people that you would uh, give us ways to do so. Father, we thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you, Lord, that you are present in each home. Wherever people are watching this, that your presence is with them. Lord, we, uh, we thank you for those who have been giving and have uh, blessed the church and have put their trust in you continually in their giving. We ask a blessing upon them. Lord, we ask a blessing upon your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it, it appears we're headed in the right direction. Some things are beginning to happen. Uh, maybe not as fast as we would like them to go, but uh, we are seeing a little progress, opening some things back up. Uh, so we're hoping that you're staying healthy. Uh, we've been praying for you and uh, hoping that that's uh, the case. So uh, as we move forward, we're going to keep you informed of the things that we'll be doing. We, uh, we started a series called Partner or Panic. And uh, this series really came out of uh, what we've been going through. And uh, so uh, it was interesting uh, one, one day I just felt like I was to read 1 Corinthians 1, nine. That When you look at that, it kind of looks like, uh, you know, the, the, the numbers that we've been looking at, uh, the coronavirus 9, and, and so just, uh, or 19, and so that's, that's what happened when we came up with the series, and it says, God will do this, for he is faithful to do what he says, and he has invited you invited you into partnership with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And, and I, I read that and I thought, you know what? God is going to do this. And, uh, and I talked to uh, Nate and, and Brian, who we work on series together, and I showed them, and we came up with this series called Partner or Panic, because in tough times, uh, things can happen. Uh, it gets hard to make decisions. We've had to make a lot of decisions lately. And, uh, you know, we, we always have a lot of decisions to make anyway, but these are some decisions that none of us have had to make before. And so we thought, you know, this is, we have to partner. If God is going to do this, and through this, we need to partner with Him and not panic. Now, that's easier said than done, but that's what he invites us to do. He invites us into a partnership with him. And so the question then is, will you partner with his son or will you panic? And so uh, we've been talking about different things to go along with that, and we're going to continue that today. I have to confess something as we get into this today. Um, when I'm when I'm driving, uh, the, some of them other drivers out there can can really be irritating. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I have to admit that thoughts like that go through my mind, and man, it, it sounds it sounds harsher saying it out loud. And even so, uh, behind uh, with a camera in your face to say that it, it sounds it sounds harsh. And uh, but I have to admit that those those thoughts, and and I'm sure that you have them too, where those thoughts of of people driving and how they drive and what they do, and they're not going fast enough, going too fast, all those things. I'm sure those thoughts have went through your mind also. But I, I've long confessed that that I'm not patient, that uh, I, I'm just a get her done type of person. I I, I rush. I probably do some things faster than I should. And uh, you know when you mix an impatient person with a justice, without diplomatic skills, which is what I am, and uh, being a justice, justice without diplomatic skills will, will get me into trouble, and so good thing I've worked on that. But when you, when you add those two things together, man, it, it, can, it can really, really be bad news. Uh, but bottom line is waiting is just not my favorite. It's just not anything I like. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not unusual for some of those traits that I have, and, and many of you have, for some of those traits to, to uh, pour over and transfer over in our relationship with God. So what I want to do is I want to look at impatience in our spiritual lives. 
and see what that looks like. See what the effects of that are and see how we can adjust that. John Piper says this interesting thing. He says, patience in doing the will of God is not an optional Christian virtue because faith is not optional. And in patience is the fruit of unbelief. It is no minor skirmish. <laughs> uh, when I read that, I thought, wow, uh, he didn't beat around the bush on that, that uh, statement. And uh, he just says, basically, when we have patience, we don't have faith. And, and it's, it's not an option. To, to not have faith in our walk with Christ is just not an option. And so in our relationship with Christ, in patience is a big deal. When we have this uh, life of not being patient and we're always in a rush and we want things right now, it's a big deal. And the reason it is in a spiritual sense is because it's a faith issue. It's a trust issue. And uh, some, sometimes we have that. There's, there's still several things that can happen when we're impatient with God and, and impatient in our spiritual life. There's, there's a lot of things that can happen. Um, you know, we can quit. We, we can throw in the towel. We can, we can just give up. Um, there, can, there can be a gap that happens in your relationship with God. It brings distance between you and him. Uh, sometimes we make rash and impulsive decisions and we, we get out ahead of God. And sometimes we think, uh, we make those things thinking God is, is too slow or he's just not going to do it. Or, uh, you know, we could feel like he doesn't care. We can, uh, uh, we can get doubt. We talked about doubt last week and how, how doubt can come in and uh, our trust and our belief in him. And uh, we, can, we can feel like he failed us. When, when things don't happen and we're not patient with God doing things, we can feel like, you know, he just, he's let me down. And that can lead into blame. We been, begin to blame God. And, and uh, so then the other things are we, we just get ahead of him. Some of those others don't happen necessarily. We just get out ahead of him and start making decisions that we probably shouldn't be making alone or we, we can even turn to anger. And so uh, waiting for the Lord is not giving up. It's not surging ahead, but it's looking to him for the next move. What is our next move? What do you want me to do? I want to show you a scripture in Psalms, really powerful dealing with waiting. Uh, Psalms 27, 13, and 14 says this, A I remain confident. Stop right there. I remain confident in waiting on the Lord for him to do what we're praying, for him to do what we want him to do. The psalmist says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So what is he confident in? He's confident in that he's going to see the goodness of God. He's going to see God move. Verse 14 says, wait for the Lord be strong, take heart, and wait for the Lord. Now, through a rough time of my life, and, and many of you know this, uh, I felt like one day going through a hard time uh, that the Lord put on my heart these words, wait shouldn't be wait. And I, and I thought about that for a moment. And, and uh, what it was was while I wait on God to do a work in me, it shouldn't be heavy. It shouldn't weigh me down. And you go back to this, this passage in Psalms that says, I will remain confident. I will see God move. And in the midst of that, I will remain strong and take heart. So in the midst of waiting, the psalmist is saying, we need to remain calm. We need to remain strong and wait on God. And, and I thought, you know, many times it's, it's kind of like we, we give God our issues. We say, all right, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this issue. And we hand it over to God. We hand this issue over to God, but we remain carrying the weight of it. We say, all right, God, I'm going to give it to you, but we remain carrying the weight of that issue. And we carry it around. And so this isn't faith. This, this is not faith. 
We're really not trusting him until, like the psalmist said, that in the midst of this, knowing that God will do what he says he's going to do, and I will be strong through it. And does it it ever say it's going to be easy? No, never, never says that. But wait shouldn't be wait. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone coming to repentance. Let's look at those words. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. How many times have you said, and I have said, you know, come on, God, when are you going to do this? And yet, in his timing. But his timing and my timing, don't, they don't match up. You know, so, so the way we understand slowness is not the way he understands slowness. Matter of fact, I, I read this sometimes and I think, I wonder if God ever says, you know, you, you think that you're being patient with me. Do you have any idea how patient I've been with you? <laughs> I mean, what if the roles were reversed where, where God would say that to us? Now, of course, he's not. He's just saying, you know, it's, again, a weight, a trust, a trust in him. I have heard it said, stay in his appointed place, go at God's appointed pace. Stay at his appointed place and go at God's appointed pace. You know, I, I, I often find, find myself quick to go to, in my pace, to my own place. I, I'm running at my pace, going where I think I, I should be. And, uh, but if, you, if we would dig deep down in patience, what we're going to find deep down in it is pride. Uh, and it's hard to link those two things together, and, and sometimes they just don't even seem they match. But if we would go down into uh, impatient, we're going to see pride there. We're going we're gonna to find pride. And, uh, you know, I realize myself that my, my impatience is, is based off my pride, that, that this, is, this is what I want. I, I believe I can solve my problems. I, I believe that, uh, that I can do it, that there's some things that I don't need God to do. I, I, you know, I want it when I want it. I want it the way that I want it. And if you look at all those things, it's, it's the I, which is pride. It's pride. Pride leads to impatience. And pride leads to a lack of unbelief. It leads to a lack of, of faith in our lives. And, and you may be going, oh, no, 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 no. no Byron, I, I've got a lot of faith. I'm, I, I am a firm believer. And I'll tell you how you can measure that is, is wait, wait. When you have to wait on God, when you're going through a really hard time, when you don't understand God and you say, I'm trusting you in this God, is there wait? That's a great meter to look to see where we're at and what our trust looks like and what our faith looks like in him. And uh, so, you know, waiting on God, it's just never easy. I, there's nothing easy about it. But the problem with impatience is that it all, often leads to temptation. It's the temptation to, to do the things that we talked about earlier, to give up, to blame God, to get angry at him. A temptation. The temptation of doing it our own way. Going, you know what, God, if you're not going to deal with this issue, then, then, then I'll take it. I'll take it over. I, I've waited for you long enough, and uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take over. You know there there are several st- stories in the Bible that talk about this. I mean, great people of the Bible, or they struggled with wait. They struggled waiting on God, and and uh, one of those is Moses. Moses is known as a great man of God in the Bible, and and yet he struggled at times with being impatient. He struggled at times waiting on God, and, and probably weight became weight in, in his life. And, uh, you, know, one, you know, he's, he's going to lead the people out of Israel and, and uh, out of slavery uh, f- uh, from G- Egypt. And, and uh, as he, he was younger, he's seeing the cruelty 
of the uh, Egyptians. He's seeing how they're treating these people as slaves, and, and uh, he, he saw how they were beating on them and mistreating them. And uh, he believed that he, uh, and, and was praying that God was going to use him. He knew that God was going to use him. He knew that God was going to do something through him. And so he was praying, God, show me. Show, show me what you want me to do. Show me when you want me to do it. But God was silent. <laughs> Don't you love it when God's silent? <laughs> those, those are tough times when God's silent. And that's what was happening to Moses. God was silent and uh, he hadn't answered a prob- his problems. He hadn't told him what to do. And, uh, and so there he was, day after day, anger was building up. That, that can happen when we wait. Anger's building up, and uh, he's, he's waiting for God to do something as he's seeing this, this wrong being done, this injustice being done. And as day would go by, day after day, frustration would set in, and him not being able to do anything, just just A at Moses, because he knew that God had picked him to lead these people out of slavery. And so he decided to act. <clears throat> he decided to take it uh, into his own hands. And, and you know what he really did? He did what a lot of us do. He, he reasoned. We can really get in trouble when we reason, and, and Moses did. He, he reasoned. You know, he, he's reasoning and he's saying, you know what? God has saved me to rescue these people. True. God has saved me to lead the Israelites to freedom. Absolutely he did. But God is not acting quickly enough. Does he not see these things? So he's reasoning and he thought, you know what? Therefore, if God has not done anything, he, wa- he must want me to fulfill this prophecy. He must want me just to go ahead and do this. Well, so what happens? He, he sees the taskmaster beating up on this, this Hebrew. He sees it happening, and he takes matters into his own hands, and he, he, uh, he, he begins to beat this, this, uh, uh, this Egyptian, and, and he kills him. He kills him. And uh, the scripture in, in Exodus talks about how Moses looked around. He's, he's looking around to see who was looking. And when no one was looking, he takes it into his own hands and he strikes this Egyptian and he, and he kills him. He kills him. Now, it's interesting to me, later on in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, it talks about this situation with Moses. And uh, look what it says in Acts 7.25. Moses thought, that's what happens when we reason, Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. In his own mind, he thought, oh, look at this. I'm going to take over. I'm going to do what God's called me to do. I'm going to do this thing. I'm, I'm tired of waiting. He began to be impatient where pride was behind that. God's going to use me, and I'm going to step out, and I'm going to do this thing. He, he thought, you know what? When I do this, when I, when I kill this Egyptian, they're going to know that I'm here to rescue them. They're going to see it. Well, that's not what happened, and it just stirred up other issues. And, uh, you know, when, when we do things that aren't according to God's will and God's timing, we can really get ourselves in some trouble. And uh, that's what happened for a time with Moses. Of course, he came through that and did a lot of great things. And uh, so there's another story uh, about two, uh, two people called um, Ishmael and Isaac. And I don't know if you've ever read this story. There, there is a whole lot in this story in the book of Genesis about what happened here. And uh, so what happened is this involved Abraham and Sarah. And so they were promised a son. God had promised them a son. And, uh, and when God hadn't come through with his promise, when God hadn't done what he said he would do on their time, they decide to take matters in their own hands. And so what happened here uh, is that Sarah decided, uh, and this was kind of some customs that were there, uh, that she would have her slave uh, bear this child. And so, because she, she couldn't do it. And so, um, matter of fact, this is the word she uses in Genesis 16. She said, the Lord has kept me from having a child. Because it wasn't God's time yet, she says, well, God's punishing me. God has not let me do this. Well, that's what happens 
uh, Hagar uh, has this son, and they're claiming it as their son, and they, they name him Ishmael. And from the very beginning, uh, just caused a lot of issues, lots of issues. And, uh, and then, of course, because they went ahead of God, there was a time span in between, but God did what he promised. And uh, they gave that son uh, to, to Abraham and Sarah, just as he had promised. Now, if you look at this story, it's interesting because Ishmael represents a man thing. Sarah and Abraham took it into their own hands, and issues happened. Now, Isaac, on the other hand, was a God thing. This was, I mean, by this point, uh, Abraham and, and Sarah are old. Like when, they, when God said, you're going to have this child, they're like, this cannot happen, and it did. So Ishmael sometimes is us, where we do a man thing. We, we make it happen, and it doesn't always work out so good. And we need to wait on that Isaac. We need to wait on that God thing for him to do it. Have you ever taken it into your own hands? Have you ever, ever taken waiting on God into your own hands and, and made it happen? We have to ask ourselves, will we, will we partner or will we panic? Margaret Thatcher, ex-prime minister of England, who was referred to as the Iron Lady, suffered from some of the same human views of patience that we do. But listen to what she says. I am extraordinarily patient, provide I get my own way in the end. <laughs> that's, that's not patience, is it? I mean, if we just get our way all the time, then we don't have to wait on anything, then, then, it's, then it's not patience. And so, you know, what do we do? How do we, how do we take away this animal? How do we tame this animal of impatience? How, how do we do such a thing? Well, let me, let me share a couple of things that, that might help you in, uh, in, in taming this animal. And, and, you know, some of us deal with impatience more than others. Some of you do really well. Some of you are very calm and, and uh, you, you have no problem with waiting and, and, uh, and, it's, and it's easy for you. But there's, uh, there's several of us that it's just not easy. And uh, look at Psalms 130, verse 5. This is a, this is a great start in this. It says, I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. In his word I put my hope. Now, how, how does the writer sustain his patience as he waits on the Lord to show him the next move? How does that happen? He says, I wait on the Lord, my soul waits, in his word I hope. In his word, I hope. See, the strength that sustains you in patience is hope. Is the hope that God will do it. Is the hope that God sees what you need. That he answers your prayer. The hope that he will do that. And the source of hope is God's word. The source of our hope is in God's word. See, hope is just faith, future tense. That's what, that's what hope is. It's faith, future tense. We're hoping, we're, we're relying on, and that's what the psalmist says, uh, I'm hoping by trusting in your word. In Hebrews, it says that faith is an assurance of things hoped for. The assurance of things hoped for. And, and it tells us that, also it tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. So that's how faith comes, which feeds hope when we're impatient, when we're waiting on God. Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the substance of things, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing the Word of God. So when you, when you look at this, um, this is a way to battle 
in patience. This is our, this is our battle cry. This is, this is how we reinforce our hope when we wait. This is how we can not have heaviness, not have weight while we wait. So we battle this impatience by reinforcing our hope or our faith in God. And the way we, we, the way we reinforce our hope in God is to listen to his word, especially his promises. That You hang on his promises. What if Abraham and Sarah would have just hung on his promises for them? They would have brought hope and waiting on those things that God was doing. And a matter of fact, James takes it even farther, not, not just hearing, but, but James says, no, you can't just hear it. You've got to do it. It's, there's, there's a lot more than just hearing his word that builds that faith, but faith really is an action. It's an action of what we hope for. So, you know, if you're tempted to, to give up to, to go, go ahead on your own without God, I want you to realize that at that moment that you're entering into spiritual warfare. It's a big deal. Anytime you deal with pride, it's spiritual warfare. It's, it's a battle that goes on. And so if you find yourself in that spot where you're, you're angry at God, where, where you're giving up hope, where you think he doesn't care, about you, where your, your prayer has not been answered yet, you have to realize that you're, you're walking into a spiritual fight, that there's things that are, are, are just about to happen. It's spiritual warfare. And the scripture tells us to take the sword of the Spirit. Take the sword of of the Spirit, and, and use some wonderful promises that are written in this book against the enemy of impatience. As you wait on God, you use this book to increase your faith, which will give you hope. Let's look at Ephesians 6 that talks about spiritual warfare. It says, stand firm then. Stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, and here we go, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So as we go into the Spirit, where as you find yourself in that place of impatience and waiting waiting on God and and, and you're, you're struggling in the midst of that and there's weight, even though you said you've given it to God, there's a heaviness there, you're frustrated, there's a gap between you and God. When that begins to happen, you begin to fight that with the Word of God. The Word of God. The word of God will bring hope. It will bring faith. Faith comes by the hearing of the word of God. Another thing you can do in the midst of this is seek godly counsel. Seek some people. Talk to them. It's amazing when we talk to people about the things we're going through that many times seem really big until we began to talk to them and they began to shrink a little bit. I'm not making light of the things you're going through. Not that things are easy. We go through a lot of hard things. Sometimes I think, man, I, 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 just, I do not know how people make it through hard times without God. I just, I just don't know how they do it. And, and a lot of times you see that they, they turn to other things to help them through. But if we would seek, God, seek godly counsel, uh, Proverbs eleven fourteen says, where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. There's safety in the presence of multiple counsels where people will pour into us. 
Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Go to these people. These, I'm, I'm talking about godly people. Seek godly counsel. Be careful who you seek counsel from. You need godly counsel. And here's my last thing that, uh, that I want to encourage you to do when you're fighting the battle of impatience where you're struggling and, and all these other things are happening. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to become a preacher. I want you to become the preacher. And so what do I mean by that? Here's, here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand outside of yourself and look back at yourself. <laughs> so you can, It would be like me getting on the other side of this pulpit and now I'm preaching to myself. Because listen, I have to do that. Matter of fact, this message is probably for me more than it is for you. So you get outside of yourself and you begin to preach to yourself and this is what you say. You say, Byron, did you not see what happened to Abraham and Sarah when they, when they were impatient and they took things into their own hands? Do you, do you want to do that? Byron, do you not want God to do something where it's a God thing and not a man thing? Where it's him and not you? I mean, did you not see what the Bible says happens when you don't wait? Did we not just talk about that? Uh, for those who trust in God, for those who trust in God, he will be there. Do you not see that, Byron? I mean, Byron, do you, do you see that there's blessings in waiting? Byron, do you not see that? So just begin to preach to yourself. Preach to yourself what the Word of God says. Faith comes by hearing, and why not preach to yourself? Why not hear it from yourself? Listen to Galatians 5, through 25 says, but the fruit of the Spirit, the results of, the results of hanging out with God, the results of that relationship that we have with Him, the results of that is love, joy, peace, forbearance, which means patience. You know, it's, it's hard to have patience when, you don't, when, when you, you don't trust the one you're waiting on. It's hard. If you're not sure about the one that you're trusting in, it's hard to have patience. The fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of walking, the results of having a relationship with God like that will help you have patience goes on, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh. That's pride. Have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. That passion and desire to go ahead, to get out ahead of God, to move on your own, to, to have a, an Ishmael. Remove those saints, crucify them. 25 says, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. It's a journey. We talk all the time about this journey, following Him. It's a journey that we're on. Patience is holding up under difficult circumstances. And it's through the Word of God. It's through having a hope. And that's based on our faith and our trust in him. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. That's waiting without weight. God, he'll renew your strength when you're tight with him, that relationship's there, and you're trusting in him even though it doesn't look good. Do you need strength? Do you need that kind of strength today in whatever you're going through? The question goes back to, will you partner with the Son of God or will you panic? It's a question we have to ask ourselves. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you that you have given us resources to battle, to win this battle against impatience. And Father, we thank you for that. 
So Lord, I pray. I pray for those who are struggling, even right now. Father, who feel weak in their situation, worn out and tired. There's even anger and frustration. Lord, I pray for them. I thank you for your word that gives us a battle plan to fight this and that we can overcome and that we can have confidence that we will see God in the land of the living. And that we can stay strong in the midst of that. Father, we thank you for your promises. And Lord, I thank you that you will, that you will come through. So Lord, I pray that as we wait, you will renew us. Father, I pray that you would renew them. Renew those who are worn out. Let them fly like eagles. Let them run and not grow weary. Father, we're thank, thankful. We're thankful, Lord, for your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 27, 13 through 14 says this, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Maybe today you've been sitting through this service and you realize that you're really struggling in confidence and faith. We want you to know that the greatest leap of faith that you can take is the very first one, which is to put your trust in Jesus. And so what we would love for you to do is if, if that is you, if you're ready to begin to turn your feet towards Christ, to begin walking in his direction, we want to know that too. We just want you to click in the link below that says yes. Fill out the information, and we want to help you on your next steps in starting a relationship with Jesus. And one of your first best steps that we believe is to join one of our Journey Online groups. Uh, we have these groups open on Tuesday mornings at 11 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. And there will be a link in the group uh, in the chat below that you can uh, head over to that. Or you can just go over to uh, My Life Changing Church dot org slash journey to get signed up yeah and there are another, there are other links in the chats as well that we that could be important to you such as giving signing up to be an online discussion group leader uh, a place for prayer requests because we want to we want to be a part of this with you we want to partner with you in any way we can during this time and while you're on your journey and we're just so glad that you would choose to be with us today don't go anywhere yet because we have a challenge that's been waiting for you here we go All right, everybody, well, welcome back to week number three of our Partner or Panic Challenge. As you can see, Byron, what is Nate wearing here? He has the collar of shame on. <laughs> <laughs> and so what we're gonna be doing is, uh, as you can see, Nate is blindfolded. He has no idea what's under this box. He is gonna put this, uh, this collar of shame right over a plate of something on it to smell it, and he's gotta guess uh what that smell is what that is so mm. uh yeah so we're not going to take real long in doing this because i imagine it's not going to smell real good but all that aroma is going to get inside <laughs> this this uh collar of shame and uh, right to nate's nostrils so uh, without further ado here is the reveal mm. okay okay so i gotta find so nate we're gonna yep. we're gonna yep if yep. you just bend down Get that right over top of the plate there. Perfect. There you go. Oh, you should start smelling mm. something very sweet. Mm, what is it? It uh, smells like a, mm, a chicken. Chicken? The chicken? No, it's not chicken. What not is chicken. that? Oh, um, smell harder. I'm smelling as hard as I can. <laughs> is it? Uh, what is that? Uh, what is that? Well, you tell us. Uh, yeah. Mm, um, <laughs> Boy, that it's uh, it felt, smells very chickeny. That's all I can come up with. No, uh, it's not chicken. No, no, no uh, not chicken. You gotta go the other fish? way. Fish, fish, no, no, no oh, not oh, chicken, okay. not fish. No, is but, it? But, <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> it's not but. Um, oh, what? Uh, it's not chicken. It's not, not, not fish. fish. Is it? Uh, What's the other? <laughs> is it beef? There you is go. Beef. 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 Oh. Well, but, but what? Oh. Not but, but. Roast beef. Is it roast beef? I no. Mean, is it roast? Is it a, is it an old roast? Is it? 
Well, uh, beef and noodles. Mm, I, uh, I mean, I'm getting hungry now. Uh, oh um, my, <laughs> that's gross. Is it uh, oh, dog? Dog. Dog what? Dog food? Dog yeah. food. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Man, your dog eats well. Yeah. 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 Oh. All right. Oh, okay. that stinks. It right. does stink. It doesn't smell good. Careful. Oh. All right. Here we are. Brian's turn with the cone of shame on. And we are going to get you ready to go here. Are you ready to go? He's a little oblong. It is a little oblong. I Oblong. You look good. Yeah. It's all right. What's, what's, a, what's oblong? Go. You're the cone. Oh. All right. Ugh. There you go. Okay. You go right straight on down there. We're good. I'm breathing through my mouth still. Right. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh. It, oh. Is that? Oh, I smell like. Is it mustard? No. <laughs> is it? Is it a? It smells like a mustard pickle. <laughs> Is it a mustard pickle? <laughs> it's not a mustard pickle. There is some mustard in there, though. Oh, my word. Is it? A, is there no pickle in there? No. No, there's no yeah. pickle oh, in there. Oh, mustard. Eh, it is, uh... Yeah. Oh. It is what? Is it? Is it just hot mustard? <laughs> no. Stay away from mustard. Stay, okay. Stay away from mustard. mustard yeah. Okay. Um, Here, get it. No, dude, I... I Here. Here, get it right yeah. there. There you go. Yeah, you quit go. it! Um... You're letting some out. You bullies. Let's see. Uh, what is oh, it? I, I. Huh? It, Take a big whiff. Is it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. That's terrible. I don't know. It. Uh, I, I, I can't get I away can't, from mustard. I can't hear you. I can't hear you sniffing. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's enough sniffing. It's kind of a chicken. I'm not going to get addicted, am I? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get addicted. Um, it's a kind of chicken? Yeah. Mustard chicken? No. <laughs> Stay no. away from Dude. mustard. Oh, it's, it's, is it, is it dill chicken? No, no, no. <laughs> think, think of a different type of chicken. Is it rotten chicken? No. <laughs> Is it a dead live chicken? It's not a land oh. chicken. It's chicken. Chicken of the sea? <laughs> is it tuna? Yes. <laughs> it's tuna. Oh. With some, some extra additives. Oh. I like tuna, but oh. not that kind. If you can even see it. There oh. is mustard on it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. All right, it's Byron's turn. You ready? Can't see anything. Yep. Cone of shame around his face. And so oh. here oh. is here's the reveal. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can <clears throat> smell it already. Oh, bring it on down. Okay, bring it on down. You are almost there. Close, a little more. Little there more. you go. Oh. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> is that cat food? Is it cat food? It is not cat food. Oh, oh my word. It smells like a cat. <laughs> is it? Is it tuna too? It's tuna. tuna. It's tuna. You got it. It's tuna. Well done. The big straight, winner. straight tuna. Why does it smell so tuna. bad? I, know. I, I did because I like tuna. I do too. Yeah, I eat it. I know. Why would that smell so bad? I think it's all in my head. All right, so we're in round two now of our uh, cone smell challenge. And so Nate, uh, are you ready? All right, we're gonna reveal. Here the we go. Collar of shame. Collar of shame. All right, buddy, we'll, we'll help you, you down. Go. Okay. You can't see. And just right, a little more, down a little more, and there you're you good. Go. You got it. Get, what in the world is that? That, oh, oh my gosh, I want to figure it out now. What is that? Oh, what is that? Oh, it's, it's leaking through the collar. Oh, what? Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know what that is. Is it, uh, it smells oniony. Uh, uh, -huh, uh -huh. yeah, oniony. Uh -huh, okay. Uh -huh. Is it liver and onions? No, 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 uh, no. Uh, Oh my gosh. Oh, that is really strong. That is strong. Uh, uh, um, onion soup, onion. No, 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 oh. no, it's not onion. It's not onion. No, but it's kind of close. Looks like kind of like one, maybe. What? Sort of. Oh man, Let's hurry see. up. You I can't figure my, that out. My eyes would be watering blank, if there wasn't blank, a blindfold on them. Blank bread. What? what? Sourdough bread? No. No, what is that? I don't know what this is. I've never smelt this before. <laughs> What is that? Oh, uh, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, tell me. I'm telling my face it's, is going to smell. It's garlic. 
Garlic bread. That's it's garlic gar- bread? It's just garlic. Oh, just okay, garlic. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh. oh, the coke Ooh. smells already. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, here's Brian's second chance at this. See if you can do a little better than you did last I, time. Oh, man, I'll try. Yeah, with the collar of shame on. Ready to go, Brian? I'm ready. Here we go. Right, let's reveal it. I'm breathing through my mouth. Okay, here we go. Are we ready? Yep. Okay. We'll help guide you. Okay. Ew! <laughs> 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 I mean, is it death? <laughs> oh. Is it? Maybe. Uh, give, is it a food? I mean, not, no hints no. yet. Okay. Uh, I mean, the smell smells like, it smells like I caught a mouse in my house three weeks ago and I haven't found it yet. Is it a, is it a dead mouse? No. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh... Is it, is it flesh? Is it rotten flesh? What is that? I mean, do people eat this? Give me something. Oh, you want some clues now? Yeah. No, no, nobody would eat it. No. Okay. Is it, is it, is it, so it's not food? Well, you know, they're. Uh, sort of, kind of, it, uh, in a long way. Is it, it's, it. So it's not food. <laughs> no. no it's not okay. Food. Is oh. it? Is it something that you kill things with? No. Is it's not a poison? No. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> is it? <laughs> I, I I really have no idea. It's it's. We so, get down a little bit further. Yeah. You got to get the cone over it. Oh. There you go. Right, go, down. <laughs> go down. Go down. Go down. No, because you guys are gonna put it on. <laughs> no. <laughs> we can't even get in there. Um. What? I, I, I'm struggling. This is bad. My you, eyes are you, watering. You've smelled something similar to this before. I have? Yes. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I, give me a hint. Is it outside thing? Yes. Is it... Is it mowed grass from a year ago? <laughs> mowed grass from a year ago? <laughs> that would stink. Oh. I, I I don't know. Is it? I I use this at times. You use it at times for what? <laughs> well, I'm going it's on like a date. Anger. Oh, it's my dad's cologne. <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. Get me out of here. What is this? Well, you tell us. I don't I know. I use it when I when I go hunting. Oh, is it? De- is it? Is it? Is it deer pee? Yes. Oh. <laughs> All right. What? What? I don't know. I get this. That's awful. Oh, I smell it already. Oh, my word. What is that? Okay, here we go. Oh. Oh. Hold it, he says. Hold it, he says. That's terrible. I don't want to gag. (laughs) Why? It's all right if you gag while my head's in there. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Hurry up. Just roll the cameras. Roll here them. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So here we go. This is Byron's turn. We're getting ready for the big reveal with the cone of shame. Bring it on down, Byron. Did you reveal it already? Oh, yeah. It's revealed. Oh. Right, right in there. A little further down. Is that a sock? <laughs> a little further down. There you, there, you go. Go. There, there you go. There you go. Now you're getting all the fresh. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Is it sulfur? <laughs> That's a great guess. That's a great uh, guess. It is a great guess. Is it your old t-shirt? <laughs> That's <a great> uh, <laughs> keep that cone down there, man. I don't, I don't want that smell getting out. Oh, yeah. Oh, get down there. I have no idea. Oh, it's gross. It's bad. It's bad. It right is here. gross. Whatever it is, it's bad. <laughs> it's a just, dead no, animal. It is not a dead animal. Is it? Uh, Although a dead animal. Is it Brian's shoe? <laughs> Ooh, it's no. Nate's shoe. No, no, no. no. It's a. Uh, it's the sole of a shoe. <laughs> the in, the inner part of a shoe. Well, what? No. It's gross. Yeah. Hurry up. Um, 
Let's see. What? Um, <laughs> hands, come on. I can't even come up with one. Oh. Many, many. You talk faster. Many men use this. Oh, my word. It's a good relief. <laughs> Can I say that? Is it poop? It is it's not. not poop. It's not poop. Uh, You're close. I'm close? Is it throw up? No. no. I thought Brian had the throw up. No. Nope. Is it your daughter's throw up? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. not no. Nope. This not, is really sick. Not poo, but. It could be. It's kind of a. It's not a cake that you would eat. Yeah. Oh, it's the thing in the toilet. <laughs> you got it. Oh! <laughs> Just, that was Nate's thing for you. Oh. That, 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 <laughs> I want you to remember. That's horrible. Oh. That's fantastic, but horrible. Oh. All right, so and that's it, guys. Gross. Have a great week. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> that was him for you. There were... There were some additives that were put in there, though, and I had nothing to do with the additives. So, wait for me. Does the fart smell? <laughs> oh, my head hurts. Oh, that's so gross. I've never went down and smelled one of those. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.